What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple officially released iOS 26 beta one to registered developers and it contains the biggest redesign we've seen to iOS in many years. So in this video, we're going to take a look at more than 20 standout features in iOS 26 beta one. And of course I will have a much longer, much more detailed video coming in the coming days. Okay, so let's first talk about the redesign because yes, iOS 26 introduces a brand new glass-like redesign across the entire OS. We're talking about home screen icons. We're talking about the control center. You can see it's a lot more translucent now. We're talking about the notification center with the music player, including the actual notifications themselves, the buttons. Take a look at the buttons all throughout the time right here. It all has that glass-like look, and it's not just on the home screen, which by the way, on the home screen, if you haptic press right there, you can see that we have the buttons up top that are also clear and glass-like. And if you tap on edit, this pop-out menu, take a look at how that comes out, that's new. We also have these buttons right here. If you go to customize, we have new options down here for how you can customize your on-screen you know, app icons. So if you go to clear, take a look at this. We now have clear, like full glass icons on the home screen and it looks amazing you could also make them large like so you also have the option down here to change from dark light or auto and also when you go to dark you could have it always be in dark mode or you can change that to auto right there but these clear icons look amazing with the right wallpaper as you can see right here including the widgets the widgets also adopt that style and this also applies to all of the third party app icons as well you can see snapchat facebook all of them are updated and this just looks like a jailbreak tweak from back in the day a jailbreak theme from back in the day it looks amazing and again this goes throughout all the applications as well so if we go into weather for example take a look at the ui elements down here how it's clear we have this little bar at the bottom if we go into the notes application for example take a look at the bar on the bottom and if we go to a new note take a look at the ui up here as well so every application is going to have a new look thanks to this glass-like design. And if you look ever so closely at the app icons, the light on the edges actually moves with the gyroscope built in to your iPhone. So you can actually see the icons, you have to look really close, but the borders of the icons, the lighting will change based on the direction that you're holding your phone. It's pretty amazing. Oh, and also take a look at folders as well. So if you go into one of our folders, take a look at the UI there for that. So you'll just see this throughout iOS now, including the app library over here. Now, if we go to our lock screen, we also have a change here. So if we haptic press on our lock screen and we go to customize, you'll see a few changes here. So first off, we now have a little icon in the bottom left to quickly change wallpapers without having to go through the long process before you could just choose photo or show that photo in the library but more importantly you can now change the widgets to be at the bottom instead of always being at the top so you can go down here you can see that smooth little animation pretty smooth for a beta one I must say that part at least but you could also make the time much bigger you can make the time like massive now on the lock screen. So take a look at that and the widgets right here as well. If we tap on done, you can see that is what it looks like. It is kind of buggy right now. You can see if you have a focus mode, it will kind of overlap right there. So it's not the best, but you can kind of see what that looks like. And this looks really great with subjects. Let me show you that. So take a look at how you can edit this. You can kind of make it small or large and take a look at how the time will adjust itself. So if I move this up a little bit, look at the clock up there adjusting the size. So if I move it up there, it'll make the clock smaller. And if I make this larger, you can see it will just adjust to the perfect size. So you can have the pet and the time in the same frame and it will kind of do it for you. So that's pretty cool. If we go ahead and add this, you also have a spatial preview. So if you tap this button right here so that it doesn't have a cross through it, just like that, take a look at this. When you move your device, it moves that subject and it looks like it's real. It's like a spatial photo. So if I go ahead and tap on done, take a look at that. So it's not the best photo for, but you can see how it's kind of moving and it looks like it's alive. It looks like it's like popping out of my screen based on how you move your phone. It's very Vision OS like, very Vision Pro like, and it's quite impressive. Now, we also have some pretty big changes in the messages application. So, first off, you can see the UI when you first go into the app is a little bit different. So, up top, it shows that you're sharing your name and photo. You also have the edit right here, this pop out menu that looks a little bit different with that blurred background. And then up here in the top right, you can see that we have this pop out menu where you can change from messages, unknown senders, recently deleted, and all of that. But what's more important is if you go into 
a message or a group chat, we have multiple new features in here. Number one, if you tap on the plus, we now have polls. So you can now create a poll in a group chat to get everybody to vote. So let me give you an example. So if I say, what do you want to eat? And I have three options right here, pizza, Mexican, or steak. And I go ahead and send that. Take a look at this. Now everybody gets the option to vote in that poll. When you tap on it, it updates with this really cool animation. And you could also add a choice as well. So anybody in the group chat is able to add a choice if they don't like one of the choices that you have in there. And if you want to unvote something, if you don't want to, you know, have that vote, you could just tap on it to revoke it. And you might notice how this whole UI looks a little bit different as well. So again, this goes with the redesign, but even right here where it shows three people updated contact information, take a look at that, how it's more circular now. And then up top where it shows four people, it's kind of like bulging out. It just looks more immersive than it did before. And that includes the FaceTime icon over here as well. It has a circle around it. And also of course, the messages when you go to type that in it's more translucent now including the plus over there which is also a little bit larger but that's not the only thing because we also have something pretty major inside of messages and if we go into right here if we tap to see everybody in the group you have automatically translate and when you select that if you choose what to translate from it will download that language from the dynamic island up here and then it will start translating anything that's said in another language in real time right here within messages. You also get this pop-up menu down here to view both the Spanish and English versions, or if you want everything to just be converted to English only, you can choose that right there. And you also have the option to stop the translation at any time as well. But it gets even better because if you go back into this section up here to see everybody in the group chats, we have a new section here called backgrounds, not to mention this is all categorized better now, by the way. So everything is kind of in this own scrolling section instead of having to you know just show photos and links separately it's all in the scrollable window for everything in the group chat which is really nice but right here we have backgrounds so you can actually set a background for the group chat so you can either do a custom photo and you have these presets here which i'll just do aurora for example and it shows you a style you can change different styles like this so we'll go with the purple one we go ahead and tap on the check mark up in the top right and go back you can see what that looks like that is what the background of the group chat looks like pretty awesome if you go back into there and go to backgrounds you also have image playgrounds so you can describe what you want to create in terms of text you can just use text to describe an image and it will create that for you using ai you do also have some suggestions down here as well oh and we also finally get typing indicators in group chats so if you have a person or multiple people typing it will now show an indicator with their face indicating that they are typing in the group chats and if you're somebody who collects money from others in a group chat you can now send and receive apple cash payments in a group chat and speaking of live translation and the messages application we also have live translation in music so if you go to a song in another language it will translate that in real time for you right here in the lyrics section and this also applies to phone calls so if you get a phone call and somebody is speaking in another language it will automatically show you a, a translation of what that person is saying whether that's a phone call or a facetime call and you'll also notice throughout ios 26 that we have this floating tab bar whether that be in the music application to show this you can see the little animation when that pops out or search so like in settings for example you can see that the search bar kind of lives down at the bottom now it's kind of floating right there and that's the same throughout every application you saw that in messages as well how we have the search down there at the bottom same with safari you can see this bar down here at the bottom is floating now here's another standout feature and that is the camera application so the camera application redesign starts with the app icon which looks amazing it looks like a throwback to a previous ios camera app icon but just take a look at that app icon and when you open it up we have a pretty big change in here as well so starting off at the bottom you can see it's very simple now it just says video or photo and if you tap on one of them it does expand so you can see other modes and take a look at that animation when you scroll through there it is beautiful and you can see it's pretty specific when you scroll so that is what that looks like also right here we have the 0.5x through 5x down there at the bottom if we tap on the jpeg up top it opens up this really cool menu right here where you can change the format and resolution it's a lot more obvious now what it is versus before also if you tap on these little grid icons up there we get this new menu down here at the bottom and if you take a photo of course it will go down here to the photos which now has a circular shape to them and if you open that up it will take you to the photos application we'll talk about that in a moment but inside the settings for camera we do have 
have a new feature called lens cleaning hints. So if your camera lens is a bit dirty, it will now tell you, it will give you a notification saying you might want to clean your lens. So I really tried getting mine dirty and it would not give me that suggestion, but that is something new here in iOS 26. Also, it's really nice because when you go to the video tab and you take a look up top in the top left, it shows you all of the details about what you're shooting in. So it shows the format, resolution, and frame rates, but the way it has it laid out right there is just really nice. It's a lot more informative and simple to read versus before. Okay, so now it's about time to talk about the Photos application because iOS 18 made a pretty drastic change to the Photos app, and it's also changing quite a bit here in iOS 26 as well. So right when you open it up, you will see that it just prompts you with collections. So you do have the library over here as well, which shows you your recent uh, you know, photos and videos. It will show them all right there in one spot, which is nice to have a separate tab. And now we have another tab for the collections, which is where it shows all those pages. So these two used to be combined in iOS 18. It was just one big long page. Now it's separated. So I think this is going to make uh, a lot of people happy since it's now, you know, you can see all your recents in just one section. You don't have to get confused with all the different collections, but now right here in collections, we do have a new look as well. So you do have the three dots up here where you can show all collapse, all reorder. You could also change the view of this grid. So if I change it to this right here, it makes them bigger. This will make them smaller. And then this is the default. You can also collapse all of them, which will collapse everything. And you can choose, you know, what you want to view right there. Or of course you do have the reorder. Now, speaking of photos, we also have a change to the screenshots UI. So if I go ahead and take a screenshot here, you'll notice that we have a new animation when it takes the screenshots. And if we go into that, you'll notice a change here as well. So first off, all of the UI elements up top have a new design. So the check mark, the X, these right here have a new design. We also now have at the bottom, ask and image search. So the visual intelligence feature is basically built in now when we go to take a screenshot. Now, of course, you can see that we do also have a new UI for the edges of the screenshot. It shows like that rounded off look. Now from here, we can highlight things to search. So basically circle to search like we have on Android, you can now do that on iOS. So if you circle something in a photo, it will search on Google for that uh, image. So it will show the results from Google right here. So you can see it's pretty accurate for what I gave it. And then also down here, you can ask ChatGPT. So if you want to ask ChatGPT something further about what's on the image, you can do that. By the way, if you do highlight to search something, it will not save that screenshot. Now the music application also got a redesign with iOS 26. And this one I think is pretty awesome. So first off, you can see at the bottom how we have the home and the search right there, along with our now playing little tab bar. If we tap on home, this opens up the menu that we all know where it shows new radio library and so on now you'll also notice in the library section i now have pinned albums and that's because now if you go to an album or a playlist and you haptic press on that you now get the option first off this whole menu here is new you now get the option to pin that playlist and it will now show up top and if you go into the playlist section for example and you go to the three dots up here take a look at this you could also now create a folder so if you have folders or if you have playlists rather that are perfect for parties you can create a parties playlist and add certain playlists into that parties folder. Also in the music application, there's a feature that works a lot better than I expected, and that is audio mix. So this uses AI and just machine learning in general to smartly transition into the next song. So it chooses, it knows when is the best time to kind of end this current song and when the next song starts to actually get like a beat going and things like that. So basically like a better version of Crossfade, you can now have it automated with audio mix. So once this gets close to the end of the song, take a look not only at this transition, it will say mixing down here, but take a look at the artwork transition as well. It kind of fades out from the old song into the new songs album artwork. So it says mixing down there. Now take a look at the transition right here. Very cool. Now we also have a really nice change to the AirPods with iOS 26, a few changes actually. So first off, if you go into your AirPods settings and then you go all the way down to the bottom, we now have a section for AirPods beta updates. If you go into there, you can now toggle on 
to receive AirPods beta updates along with the analytics data. And then also if you go into your settings and go to general and then into AirPlay and continuity, we have a brand new feature here called keep audio in headphones. So it says when using AirPods or other connected headphones, you can now keep the audio in your headphones when other playback devices like cars and speakers connect to the iPhone. That is a small, but a very noteworthy change. So now if you get in a car, you know, with your AirPods, for example, I'm not sure why you would do that, but if your phone connects to Bluetooth on the car, the music will stay in your headphones. And speaking of sound, if you go into your settings and sounds and haptics, and then scroll down near the bottom, we have a brand new feature called late night mode. Now this seems to be related to the built in speaker. I did turn this on and off and I tried to tell the difference, but I was not able to tell a big difference from the music that I was playing, but there's a new late night mode now in iOS 26. Now here's a standout feature that I was really hoping I would cover in this video. If you go into settings and into battery, we now have essentially battery intelligence up at the top. So it shows our current battery percentage. It shows our last charge to percentage and it shows how long ago that was. Now, if I plug my phone in, well, charging is on hold because my phone is too hot. That's the struggle of installing a beta one. There we go. It cooled down a little bit so you can see up top and now shows how long until we reach 80% and also how long until we reach 90%, which is what I have my charge level set to. If you have it set to 100%, it would show 100% down there, but now it shows the amount of time remaining until we hit those certain thresholds. And yes, you will also see this on the lock screen. So you'll notice up top right here, it will show how long until you get to a certain percentage. I expected this to be at the bottom, but it is up top and it will show how long until you reach the next threshold, which in my case is 80%. So it shows 18 minutes until I get to 80% battery. Now, if we scroll down here, we have another change because if we go down to power mode, we now have a new mode called adaptive power. So it says, when your battery usage is higher than usual, iPhone can make small performance adjustments to extend your battery life, including slightly lowering the display brightness or allowing some activities to take a little longer. Low power mode may turn on at 20%. Now here's a standout feature that really should not be a standout feature, but you know, it is because iOS 18 was not great with this, but search in settings is now finally good again. So if you search for music, for example, it will start populating in real time as you type and it will give you really good results. So I've noticed that pretty much everything I search for now works perfectly as I'm searching for it and I get all the results that you would expect from iOS. Now we also have a couple of new applications with iOS 26, starting off with previews. You can see the app icon right there. This is the preview application that we have on Mac OS. It's now made its way over to iOS. If I load in something right here, so we just load this in, you can see you get all of your options down there for annotating, autofill, you see all of this right here. Really cool, it's a lot better than using, you know, just the notes application or files. This is much better to have the preview application for that. And then the other application is the games application. So we now have a dedicated gaming application with iOS 26 with some really cool features. So if we go into here, you'll see at the bottom, we have our floating tab bar once again, like we see throughout iOS 26. We have home, arcade, play together, and library. So you have all your games right here in the library, all the games you have. You can see events and updates. You have achievements as well. If you go to play together, it will show you the players. You can set challenges and things like that. You have all your Apple Arcade games, and of course you have your home and your search right here. And then finally, here's a great productivity one. You can now use the action button to create a reminder. So it pops up right here, and you can just quickly jot down your reminder and add it to your to-do list, which is awesome if you go into your settings and go to controls and then tap right here and search for reminders you will see it right there. So those are some of these standout features in iOS 26. Again, there are going to be several additional features and changes, which I will be covering here on the channel. So make sure you are subscribed and stay tuned for those videos. But those are some of the standouts that I've noticed just within my first hour of playing with iOS 26. So expect a lot more coverage soon. Also, let me know down in the comment below. Are you a fan of this redesign? Are you not a fan of the redesign? Let me know all your thoughts down there in the comments below. Also, be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Also, share out to the live stream squad if you were in the live stream today i appreciate you but anyways guys thanks for watching and i'll see you soon